Okay, so this is monochromatic purple work. We're going to do um, shades of purple, and I will tell you why as we go along. I did not try to make this drawing look like her, this actress. What I did was, I'm using this for those shadows, the dramatic shadows. So, um, when you're working beyond this class, just find some good, good contrast shadows, and that will help you with watercolors. So, we're going to leave a lot of this white, <clears throat> the white of the paper, the, in watercolor, the white of the paper is the white you use. And this is my test page. So I want to make a puddle of my color and come in with a first layer of shading. So I, I don't want to put it in too dark at first. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, um, add make it darker in layers otherwise it can get really too dark too quick and very flat looking so the beauty of watercolors is definitely the transparency so being able to see through so I really don't want it this dark either this is just for reference which side of the face to shadow so if you notice whoops i'm so sorry i just realized this isn't on camera <laughs> oops okay that's it so if you notice in this photo that i'm just using for shadows not for the actual face um, it's very exaggerated dark shadows so that's why i picked it and i'm not going to make it that dark See how it, it will dry even lighter than I'm working. Okay, did I press play? I did. <laughs> and I go back with water, just water, and spread it out even a little further. But um, leave a lot of white because we're going to work with a different color. You have your paper towel handy. I have a rag I'm using this time. And so if if the line is too abrupt for you, you can go back before it's fully dry and soften the line. So why am I using purple? Because I, one of the tricks artists use in painting is to use complementary colors, colors opposite on the color wheel. And when you blend them together, they will always create like a muddy brown or gray. So we're going to use the shadows of, of the mix of yellow and purple, which will be a brown. So let me show you. So there's many different skin tones out there. So that's the hard part when you're practicing. When if you want a specific skin tone, you're going to have to play around. So let me take some yellow. And then I'm going to, here's your yellow. And I'm going to put it on top of this purple. All right, I'm getting a golden color. Now, if I add a little red to that, we're gonna get yellow red. Already we're getting sort of a skin color. So see how that works? Okay, so um, I have some lights and darks already, just because I didn't do it too dark. My problem still is going too far with my paint. My darkest darks in watercolor should be a little lighter. 
Okay, so now I'm going to work on, so if, if this was going to be a color piece, I would be adding my yellows right now and make this into brown. And we can do that after we do the work monochromatically. We can change this. So let's just keep going monochromatically. Okay, so let's see. Her, usually, a lot of times when there's dramatic lighting, the top lip is in darkness. So I'm not going to do the bottom now because I don't want this to bleed. What I do is I move around because if there's a puddle sitting somewhere and you put a different color next to it, it'll bleed together. Now, if you want that bleeding effect in an abstract, that's great. But if you don't want it, just put some color down and move around. Okay, so I want to make the eyes more dramatic. I'm gonna, you can te keep testing your brush. Okay, so behind the lid, even though I can't really see it here, I'm gonna do it a little lighter than that, than in the photo. I'm gonna leave a little of her lid showing. In the photo, you cannot see her lid. Okay, and then I'm gonna go backwards darker. Again, but you gotta be quick. After you put that down, you see that line it created? And then you gotta take, just to get water and, and blend it out, okay? Go back here and this side's gonna be lighter. Now, what's happened to me before is if I, I wanted the chin to be a little darker than this part, and I've done it. If I do this at the same time, it's all when this is wet. If I paint the chin and the neck at the same time, it'll just all puddle into one piece. So I'm going to let this dry before I make the neck darker. Again, um, trying to work in places that are dry and then moving back around. So for the nose, not a lot of detail now, just some shadows underneath. If you think it's too much, whoops, kind of thing. I don't know if this is, but you just blot, blot. Okay. So again, as soon as I put that in, I'm going to get some clean water and just blend it out a little bit. All right, so I have the tendency sometimes to go too fast <laughs> and ruin it. So you're learning with me here, but I have done a lot of practice so far to get even this far. So I like to share it, learn along with me. That's a little dark under the eyes, I realize, but uh, I'm gonna quickly move, move it. Just a little less. Okay. Because I didn't check to see how much paint was on my brush that time. Now, you don't always see that under shadow, but I think it looks more real. But not everyone has that same amount of shadow. It's okay. See, my, my brush might have been a little too loaded this time, so the thing about these brushes, they do hold a lot of paint. Now that is sort of a puddle, but I'm going to actually leave that because I like that darkness and I need that on this side. But it'll dry lighter than I want it to be. Okay. 
You, you walk away, you come back, and you're like, what? It's so light as the color absorbs into the paper. You'll see a difference. And that's why you go back. The other thing is, is okay, see how nice and light this is here? Unle the f this isn't a photo, so I'm gonna have it gradually. See, that's a little too, go from dark to light here. And that's a little too, that line's a little harsh for me. So I kind of feel like this is puddling, puddling right now and I might mess it up, so I'm gonna stop after I blend this out a little. I'm gonna let this dry so that I don't mess it up. And then move somewhere else. I do like that shadow there, and I, but I do feel like it needs to just blend out slightly. Even on the darker side, you wanna leave this white for now. Because if you go to put in all this color, it just ends up being flat. And you can do that in oil and acrylic with watercolor, exaggerate the highlights. Okay, now we could have started with a light color. Like um, there's a lot of yellow in different skin tones and golds and pinks and browns. But I just wanted to sh show you how to do this monochromatically. I just feel like this has helped me a lot. Okay. Okay, so see how this dried so light, and I put that down rather dark. It's okay if you get it on the hair, unless you're doing like a white or blonde hair. I'm not even gonna do any hair this time. Okay. You can also just dry your brush off on your paper towel or rag. Which I might have, I should have done, it's, it's a little too heavily. Okay, so the eyes. When you work on the eyes, make sure there's nothing wet around it or the color, whatever color your eyes is just gonna bleed everywhere. So I wanna work on my eyes, but I, this could be, even though it, it, it is dry to the touch, it might still be damp enough to spread. So I will be doing the eyes soon. This would be, for you, it would be a good time to, um, if you were this far, just take a break and start another one or work on two at the same time. Okay, so I, I will need to keep making that darker, but until I like it, that is. Okay, so what if I do want this to be just a really subtle, subtly shadow, shadowed painting? Well, then um, I would I would go ahead and finish it. So um, with this being the darkest color. So if you don't want a real dramatic dark, 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 dark then this might be good for you. So I'm going in and just gonna make, it's sort of a shadow area. Ooh, I make lots of mistakes still. There. I didn't want the nostrils to be that dramatic. It was supposed to be like in this photo, just a sh whole shaded area. So this side is just shadow. I'm gonna pull that down and under the lip. And then under there. Whoops. Again, that was a mistake. I should have just not do this and this at the same time. The neck and the chin. Okay. All right. So, so that's a man bleh, monochromatic study so far. Just one color and shades of that color. It works good in blues, you can do it in brown, 
We're going to do one more. Now I'm going to, um, we're going to change this. into a brown color by adding the uh, yellow, which is your opposite on the color wheel, your complement. So if you get yourself a color wheel like this one, and go to yellow and across is purple. And so let's see. If I move it to violet, Um, yellow and purple will make this value like a, a five, a gray, or a brown. It always seems to make a brown for me. Okay. So I don't know if you can really see this. Let me lift it. Oops. Okay, if you see the very light, um, application of watercolor there that's only because I blended the dark out and and that's a really nice effect I think this is a good start sometimes depending on your quality or paint if you go back just with water and you wanted to smooth it more it'll work and sometimes it won't move it it depends on some of these new colors are so vibrant that they stain, which is really not how it's supposed to be like that for watercolors. Okay, so I'm gonna make this lip darker, but as you see, this is wet right above it. And if I make this lip darker, it's gonna just slide right into the water. I could, I'm noticing now, this should be a little wider. So while I'm waiting, Yeah, that's a little too wet, so it didn't do what I want. If your paint isn't doing what you want, that just means it's too wet underneath. It's kind of misleading, it looked dry. You can use a blow dryer, just mute your button if you need to speed it along with the blow dryer. If you're doing that in this class, okay. All right, so let's see. Do I dare do the eye? I don't know. Okay. Well, since I'm doing monochromatic, I'm gonna take my purple and the yellow and make a brown. Now here's a trick for other paintings. If you put down a color and it's not, it doesn't go with in your painting. You thought, oh, that doesn't look right. Add a drop of the other colors in the painting. So if I add a drop of this purple into my yellow, it's always gonna go with the colors here on the canvas because, or on the paper, because it's a mix of the two. So let's see, my first I'm gonna start with the light brown for the eyes. Oh, switch brushes for the eyes. Do a tiny brush. And then just let that first layer absorb in because if you want any highlights, you can um, leave a space for that. And like this one, I, I missed that. If you accidentally like I did, cover the highlight area. You can come back in with um, a white gel pen or white acrylic paint and make your white dot there. Okay. All right, so yeah, these, these eyes are gonna be a lot darker after that absorbs in. A 
Okay, so some of my yellow mixed with my purple here. So now I can show you how that makes a different color that is more closer to brown. Okay, so now that we have the monochromatic in, waiting on that to dry, what can I do here? Well, I'm gonna just use some yellow. I'm gonna make a puddle of yellow. I think I want it kind of watery. Okay, so um, this is no longer a, a monochromatic study. Now we can change it. I'm gonna add some yellow. And I'm just gonna cover the brown and look what happens. I mean, cover the purple, excuse me. When I cover the purple with yellow, it's complement, it's changing into a brown. And that is good for certain skin tones. You're gonna notice a lot of different ways to do this and get different skin tones. Now, I, I really like how that, I can make this have skin, pink skin tones by mixing some of that yellow and the purple with a little red. Okay, so now I have a slight amount of yellow on my brush. Okay. And I'm gonna take these two colors I'm gonna do a little yellow here. Now I am gonna change, I can make these lips. If you put in the highlight color, the yellow is your highlight. You can um, make them pink or red later. Okay, so this um, skin tone, obviously she looks like she has a darker skin color with the yellow and purples. So if I take a red, but definitely water it down a lot. Red is very intense. And then mix it with your yellow that you've been using, the same yellow. And you'll get, and you can get a little bit of the strawberry color. Now I could have started this painting with the lights first, the yellow, and then added the purple. And that works a lot, really easily in landscapes. I'm not sure why I found this easier to do it the way I did. Okay, so this is, re is really interesting here. I, now I have some yellow with a little bit of that red and you put it right over the purple and look how many colors just are in this one. It just really changes it. Now the thing is, uh, if I've gone too far, like, oops, maybe it's too yellow, I'll go back with my purple. I might, you might need to freshen up your purple like I'm going to. I have two palettes going, if you can't really see them here. Now I'm going back to the purple to darken it. Okay, it's it's a little wet. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wait. Maybe down here, yeah, it's still puddling. It depends on the weather too. So it's a back and forth, really. I probably would have waited a little longer, but I'm on camera. Okay. So now, um, I think she needs some pink skin tones. And I've got that yellow laid in, but and I've made these pink skin tones this is pretty dark though. 
You just so you can make it as thin as you want. I'm going to make this very watery. I don't want a lot of that color. And I can go back. So except I can tell I have to let this dry now. The paper is buckling. But that's a good start. I might do the rest of this live. We'll see. Okay, I, I know what I can do in the meantime. Let's take some yellow here. Now, I, I didn't do that at first. I didn't start with yellow. But if I was going to start this whole painting with just the, the light colors, the highlight colors, which is usually yellow, you see how bright that is? It's kind of too much, so I wipe a little off. Your yellow, that wasn't a medium yellow, that was a light, uh, let's see what kind of yellow this was. Cadmium light, so that's why it's so bright. So I could have started that way, and then come back with purple, and this will go brown again, remember. There. I'm just gonna leave this, uh, area light for now. Remember, in watercolors, there's an exaggerated area of highlight. Okay, so if your eyes are too small, you did a really tiny drawing, you can actually use color pencil or um, watercolor markers. So let's see, I'm gonna give her brown eyes. I might just go in here and do a little outline. And that's if I, if I really, think I'm going to mess it up. So you can go in. You can also go in with a black pencil for the pupil. But I'm just going to go for it. This time I'm just going to, I have some brown here that's just brown. You can use, you don't have to use the brown you made out of the purple every time or anything like that. But So I just have some brown. I'm going to do the outline first. color area around the purple because I mean I'm around the pupil <laughs> it looks very weird right now but that'll allow for highlights once you put that black pupil in so let's see this side is is in a lot more shadow so I think I'll just darken it and I'll just leave this one like that and I'm just going to go also under the eye when I have this really fine brush. And now I'm going to go back to my purple mixed with yellow. This is kind of, you're going to just have to learn as you go. Um, the limited palette here of starting with monochromatic shades of one color and then adding as you go is a lot easier than trying to do a lot of colors at first. See, look, where did that purple go? Once I put that yellow down, it, it kind of made it very light again. So, I'm gonna put some pink in there. And look, when I mix that yellow with the red, it really creates quite a tan color. I think if I add that purple back in now, it's just going to kind of spread where I don't want it. So, when this dries, I'll go back in with the purple here and there and there and just wherever I need to make it dark. Okay, I didn't do the ears. Normally I would have been doing the ears at the same time. So I can do them now, just throw in a little purple. And I would be doing the hair maybe. So if you're waiting for this to dry and you don't want to start another one, you can work on the hair, but don't do right there where it's touching yet. So unless you have like a black hair, it won't matter if it bleeds into the hair. So, uh, Maybe I, I will make her have black hair. 
So the thing about hair is, um, even if it's black, you're gonna have highlight areas. So, see I'm not touching this, and I shouldn't really be doing this till it's dry. But I'm just gonna get a little bulk in there and then go back and make it darker. Leaving some of these going to be dark and light with um, shadows and lights even on a black hair. You can put some blue in there also. Black, really black hair has blue shadows. Okay, so I think I keep saying I'm, I'm done for now. Couldn't have been 31 minutes. Just couldn't have been. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going back to my purple and yellow mix. Oops. Purple. I don't know how time flies. I was gonna do a 10 minute demo. So you can just use brown. I, I'm avoiding black because if black spreads where you don't want it, it's just never gonna, you're never gonna be able to cover it. Uh, plus, you make the darkest colors usually with a mix of colors. Okay, so I just wanted to put this in to give her eyes a little definition. Again, I'll do the eyelids later because I wanted to get the eyes in and that would, I didn't want the paint to spread. Okay. This one is in shadow. I'll go ahead and put that in. Even darker, there we go. Now it's starting to look like a human. And I'm gonna go back to my little purple pile. And, and see where it's dry. See if I can put in the shadows now, yeah. Nice. Mm. I have to use a bigger brush in bigger areas. Okay, so that really creates contrast, that, where I just put that in. And now I'm going to mix purple and yellow. And just go for that, make it into a brown. You can do it on your paper, and this time I'm making it, I'm doing it in my palette. Nice. I can get this in the hair, it's, it's not a problem. I want to get, um, let me see, her cheekbone, her dr dramatic cheekbone in there, so I'm going to shadow that. With it, and then I'm going to highlight it by shadowing it because it'll be it'll be dramatic. Whoops! And sometimes you can get carried away with this part, but that's why you have a, a paper towel handy at all times or rag. See, look how light that dried. Okay. Um, before we move on to on this one, I definitely have to quit. Sometimes it takes a while for it to really dry. Okay, I think I can um, put in a better hairline real quick. 
Didn't I just say I was quitting? Okay, so let that dry before you go on because I have to change my waters also. Let's see, and again, I, I wasn't making the same person, but I'm gonna make this side darker still. And that will give it a lot more interest. But I'm not gonna go this dark. With watercolor, it just doesn't work. All right, so if you have two, remember to have two water containers so that you don't have to get up as much. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It's getting there. 